the rare earth hypothesis proposes that the formation of complex life on earth was not a common occurrence, but rather the result of an improbable series of astrophysical and geological phenomena. This hypothesis suggests that the emergence of intelligent extraterrestrial life is unlikely due to the rare combination of circumstances required for such life to evolve. The concept is found in the book Rare Earth, Why Complex Life is Uncommon in the Universe by Peter Ward and Donald E. Brownlee. Opposed to the principle of mediocrity, which suggests that Earth and humans are typical in the universe, the hypothesis posits that the universe is not conducive to the formation of complex life. The Fermi paradox arises from the contradiction between the large number of planets in the universe with the absence of evidence of intelligent life beyond Earth. The hypothesis lists numerous necessary conditions for the emergence of biological complexity or human intelligence, including a habitable zone, the right planetary system, the presence of a magnetosphere and plate tectonics, chemical similarity to Earth, and the influence of evolutionary pumps the hypothesis suggests that these factors coincided only due to the Cretaceous Paleogene extinction event that allowed for the evolution of humans. Rare Earth explores the concept that there are only specific areas within the universe that can support complex life, making up what is known as the galactic habitable zone. This zone is characterized by factors such as distance from the galactic center, star metallicity, and the intensity of radiation from nearby stars. These factors ultimately limit the range of distances from the galactic center where complex life can exist additionally, a star with a circular orbit around the galactic center must maintain its location for a sufficient amount of time to allow for the evolution of complex life on its planets. The galactic habitable zone is estimated to be a ring 7 to 9 kiloparsecs in radius, including only a small percentage of stars in the Milky Way and other observed galaxies despite being a relatively quiet and dim galaxy, the Milky Way alone could still represent up to 200 billion galaxies in the known universe. Several studies propose that past mass extinctions align with movements across spiral arms, proper orbital distance from a suitable star, and the concept of a habitable zone. The existence of liquid water is essential for complex life, and the maintenance of this requires a specific orbital distance from the central star. Stability is another crucial factor for advanced life, and the sun's low luminosity variation is an example of this stability. The presence of binary systems can disrupt a planet's orbit and affect its habitability. The habitable zone shifts as a star's lifespan progresses and disappears when a star transforms into a white dwarf. Rocky planets within the habitable zone can benefit from the greenhouse effect, and only stars of a specific type are hospitable to evolve metazoan life Small red dwarf stars and oversized stars are less likely to support life due to the tidal locking effect and increased risk of solar flares. The energy output of a star must be constant to sustain life. A sudden variation in energy output could freeze or evaporate water present on planets, affecting their chances of supporting life. The central idea of the rare earth hypothesis is that the structure of a planetary system, including the presence and placement of gas giants, is crucial to the potential for complex life to develop. The proponents of this hypothesis contend that a system with small, rocky inner planets and outer gas giants with strong gravitational poles provides necessary protection from catastrophic asteroid collisions however, observations of exoplanets reveal that systems like our solar system are rare, with most systems featuring super-Earths close to their star. The authors argue that this rarity and the intricate choreography necessary to create a system like ours suggest that small, Earth-like rocky planets and the chance for life may also be rare in the cosmos. Moreover, gas giants cannot be too close to a potentially life-bearing planet, as their proximity can disrupt the gravitational balance necessary for a stable planetary orbit. Chaotic orbital dynamics, particularly in systems with large planets at high eccentricity, further complicate the chances of a system capable of sustaining life. Hot Jupiters, which are much more common orbiting F and G-class stars, present a particularly difficult challenge, as their migration towards their current orbits often disrupts the habitable zones of other planets in the system. The size of a planet also plays a vital role in its potential to support complex life. Planets that are too small cannot maintain a stable atmosphere, while planets that are too large retain atmospheres too dense and hot for life to emerge. 
Ultimately, the rare earth hypothesis posits that the unique combination of factors present in our solar system, including the placement and movement of Jupiter and Saturn, contributed to the development of a planetary system capable of supporting complex life. The story of the Great American Interchange reveals the consequences of species diversification and competition on Earth's continents. Due to the merger of North and Middle America with South America, many species were wiped out, particularly those in South America, by competing North American animals. This serves as an example of how natural events can lead to the loss of biological diversity. On the other hand, the moon's unusual characteristics make it essential for the existence of complex life forms on Earth. The large size of the moon stabilizes the planet's axial tilt, resulting in just the right amount of seasonal variation and climate necessary for evolution. Its gravity also initiates and maintains plate tectonics, preventing the entire planet from being covered by continental crust and leaving room for oceanic crust further. The moon's dynamo effect shields Earth's surface from charged particles and cosmic rays, preserving its atmosphere. The moon's role in supporting life on Earth is crucial, highlighting the significance of celestial bodies and shaping the evolution of our planet. The theme of the story revolves around the rarity of complex life forms on Earth-like planets. Despite the emergence of simple cells soon after Earth's formation, it took almost half the planet's life for them to evolve into complex ones. The evolution of eukaryotic life was triggered by the incorporation of one simple cell into another, resulting in the evolution of mitochondria, which supplied a vast increase in available energy however, if this event occurred only once in 4 billion years, the likelihood of complex life forms existing on other planets remains low. The evolution and persistence of sexual reproduction, the purpose of which is still unclear, also poses a mystery in biology while life on Earth has existed for a relatively short time, the absence of extreme climatic variations, supervolcanoes, and large meteorite impacts has allowed for its continued existence. The rare Earth equation provides a calculation for the number of Earth-like planets in the Milky Way having complex life forms, indicating their rarity. The rare Earth hypothesis centers around the number of planets in a star's habitable zone, which must meet specific conditions for complex life to evolve. This narrow zone requires consistency in average planetary temperature to ensure the presence of liquid water throughout the necessary time frame. The hypothesis suggests that the product of various rare Earth equation factors is no greater than 10 minus 10 this value could be smaller, even as small as 0 or 1. The factors include the fraction of stars in the galactic habitable zone, the fraction of planets in the Milky Way with rocks rather than gases, the prevalence of microbial and complex life, the lifespan of a planet with complex life, the presence of a large moon, and more. The rare Earth equation differs from the Drake equation in that it does not factor the probability of intelligent life evolving. Many biologists argue that the evolution from primitive animals to modern humans was highly unlikely due to various factors such as the development of large brains and vocal apparatus. These factors ultimately enable humans' dexterous manipulations and language abilities, which allow them to interact cooperatively and acquire a culture. Various experts across various fields have expressed their belief in the rare earth hypothesis, which suggests that the emergence of intelligent life on Earth is a result of a series of improbable events and coincidences. Stuart Ross Taylor, a solar system specialist, strongly advocates for the hypothesis while Stephen Webb, a physicist, investigates and rejects potential solutions for the Fermi paradox, with the rare earth hypothesis remaining as a plausible explanation. Other proponents of the hypothesis include paleontologist Simon Conway Morris, cosmologists John D. Barrow and Frank J. Tipler, computer pioneer Ray Kurzweil, science writer John Gribben, astrophysicist Guillermo Gonzalez, and geochemistry and volcanology professor Mark J. Daffant, who argues that intelligent life may only exist on Earth due to an overwhelming amount of coincidental factors that have occurred throughout the universe's history. Even physicist Brian Cox, a popular science personality, has expressed his support for the hypothesis in his BBC documentary series, Human Universe. The rare earth hypothesis, as described by David Darling, is not a hypothesis or prediction, but merely a description of how life arose on earth. Some critics argue that it is not the uniqueness of earth that matters, but whether any of its circumstances are essential for complex life. 
However, current technology limits testing important rare earth criteria, such as surface water, tectonic plates, and biosignatures. The discovery of an increasing number of extrasolar planets challenges the theory that life can only arise in sun-like systems. Some exobiologists suggest that stars outside the F7K1 range may give rise to life under the right circumstances, which is a central point of contention to the theory the requirement for a Jovian planet as a protector has also been challenged, affecting the number of proposed extinction events. In contrast, others argue that rocky planets orbiting within habitable zones may not be rare, as estimates suggest that about one-fifth of sun-like stars and orange dwarfs are expected to have an Earth-sized or super-Earth-sized planet close to an Earth-like orbit. These findings challenge the restrictive nature of the rare Earth equation factors. Ward and Brownlee argue that plate tectonics are a crucial factor for the evolution of complex life on Earth, based on the generation of biogeochemical cycles. They predicted that such geological features would not be found beyond Earth, but recent evidence suggests similar activity elsewhere, such as on Pluto, Mars, Europa, Ganymede, and possibly Venus. While there is no scientific consensus on the evolution of plate tectonics on Earth, recent studies suggest that it may be an episodic planetary phenomenon. Additionally, the idea that free oxygen is rare and dependent on plate tectonics has been challenged by more recent discoveries. These findings suggest that plate tectonics and free oxygen may not be as unique or necessary for the evolution of multicellular life as previously thought. Ward and Brownlee's claim that oxygen is crucial for animal life has been challenged by the discovery of anaerobic metazoa like Spinalorchus sinzii and the eukaryotic genus monocircominoids that lack mitochondrial organelles. Further research on alternative metabolic pathways used by these organisms has presented new challenges for the premise. Scientists have proposed other membrane alternatives for complex life in worlds without oxygen, while recent studies suggest that Earth's multicellular life existed prior to the great oxygenation event. The importance of Earth's magnetic field to the development of complex life has been disputed, as there is evidence of present or past magnetic activity in other terrestrial bodies. The necessity of a large moon for complex life has also been questioned. Casting argues that a magnetosphere may not be rare or a requirement, and the atmosphere can provide sufficient protection against cosmic rays even without magnetic fields. The theme of the story questions the necessity of the moon's influence on Earth's obliquity and spin for the existence of complex life. Casting argues that even without the moon, Earth could still support the necessary climate for complex life, and predicting the spin rate would be difficult. While the giant impact theory suggests that the moon stabilized Earth's rotation, it has slowly decelerated Earth's solar day however, larger secondary bodies could potentially increase the solar day to an extreme level, making it difficult for life to exist. The debate over whether a large moon is necessary for Earth's plate tectonics remains unresolved, with some arguing that a moon is not required to initiate it. The concept of rare Earth suggests that while simple life may be common, specific environmental conditions are necessary for the emergence of complex life. Some argue that these conditions could exist on moons of gas giants, while others dispute this due to radiation and lack of environmental stresses the possibilities for alternative biochemistries for alien life and the existence of complex life in subsurface habitats are also topics of debate. The theme of the story revolves around the significance of ancient circumvental ecosystems that host complex life on Earth. The remarkable example of Riftia pachyptila that thrives self-sufficiently independent of the surface biosphere is a testimony to the remarkable diversity and resilience of these ecosystems.